Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS5 jailbreak news update. We have a ton of news to get into here in this video. There's been a lot of developments on the PS5. I would have covered this earlier. Unfortunately, I've been ill for the past couple of days, just getting over it now, which is probably why my voice may sound a little bit weird or different in this video. But uh, I can't ignore this any longer because this is obviously a pretty big update here. We've got lots of things to dive into. The PS5 is finally taking off. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So the biggest piece of news, of course, is the release of Hammer 83's 4.0 version of the jar loader using the Blu-ray drive exploit to load the UMTX kernel exploit. And in here, you can see that he has implemented AGC-based kernel read-write primitives to allow write access to kernel data on firmware's 6.00 plus with big thanks to Flats. So of course, this is what I was talking about in one of my previous videos where I mentioned new developments that could unlock 6.0 to 7.61. And this is finally the implementation of that, which essentially means we can finally start to see proper payloads for 6.0 to 7.61, what that will eventually bring it up to sort of the same level as where we are with the 5.x firmwares right now. So at this juncture with this specific version, it does include things like a debug settings payload that you can run and an FTP server payload as well. So in order to set this up, of course, you want to download the PS5 jar loader full version, the ISO file, and burn it to a Blu-ray disc using a program like ImageBurn. Once you have it burned to a disc, you can then pop it in your PS5 and launch it. So once it runs, you can then head over to the right menu and then scroll down to the UMTX snapshot option and press X to load the UMTX kernel exploit. Wait for that to run to completion where it will say press X to go back to the menu. Once you get to that point, if it loads successfully, you can press X to return to the menu and you should now have the green kernel read write access showing in the top left hand corner, meaning that you essentially have the console jailbroken at that point. And then if you want to run the debug settings, you can then run the debug settings from the menu. And once that loads successfully, again, you can return and then exit out of the disc player and head over to the settings to check to see if you have the debug settings enabled. It should work. So if we head down to our settings, you can see we have debug settings and this can allow us to, of course, install things like uh, retail game updates. We can even install PS4 fake packages and, you know, uh, homebrew applications and stuff, but they will not run, of course, without K stuff. Um, so you can install them, but you won't be able to actually launch anything unless it's a retail update that you're installing or a retail game like uh, Astro's Playroom or something like that, in which case you'll be able to run that. But we'll have to wait for K stuff uh, for 6.0 to 7.61 before we'll be able to run fake packages. Also, if you want to run the FTP server with root access to get full access to the file system, it is a little bit different. So again, you head to the menu, you first of all run the UMTX kernel exploit as before, and then once you have that loaded, you return to the menu. But we then need to load the jailbreak snapshot, which is not part of 4.0.1. It's not included in the menu because when you run it, it basically breaks the menu system for whatever reason. So what you need to do is head to the remote jar loader option on the left and select that. And then inject the jailbreak snapshot payload from the GitHub repo using something like Netcat GUI on port 9025. And just inject the payload remotely from your computer. And that will basically allow it to break out of the sandbox. And once that's done, you can then send the FTP server payload to load uh, FTP on the PS5. And then you can log in with FTP. And the way you do that is open up your FTP client. I'm using FileZilla, of course. You just enter the PS5's IP in the host box. And then, of course, the username is going to be PS5 Jailbreak and no password. And then you can just connect on port 9225. And then once you quick connect, It'll ask you for a password. You don't have to enter anything. Just click OK. And as you can see, we now have root access to the file system through FTP instead of the regular sandboxed FTP, which is what you would get if you just ran the FTP payload without running the kernel exploit and the jailbreak payload first. So yeah, there you go. We have full FTP access now on 6.0 to 7.61. So yeah, pretty exciting stuff for 6.0 to 7.61. We are finally able now to get working payloads so I suspect we'll also see new payloads get released for this firmware that will eventually bring it up to the same level as 5.0. I don't see why we couldn't do things like maybe a PS5 debug payload for cheats uh, and, you know, remote debugging. 
and maybe a few other interesting things until we get K-Stuff ported. Now, speaking of K-Stuff, it is currently being ported. I believe Echo Stretch is working on porting the offsets to try and get kernel stuff working on 5.x firmwares right now. Although I don't know if the MMAP fix has actually been implemented here, if he's just porting the offsets or if he's also uh, got the MMAP fix implemented. There were some people claiming online a couple of days ago that that it was released and that we have a kernel stuff payload for 5.x that was just a test payload that is not working at the moment we still need to wait a little bit longer for 5.x uh, k stuff unfortunately so that's the situation there we also have some other exciting developments in terms of ps5 game dumps because idosos has released a port of spectre's ps5 self decryptor that supports 5.x firmwares now this is a pretty big deal, so this is the decryptor that's used to decrypt game executables, which can then allow you to create working game dumps or game backups that you can run on the PS5 through items flow as a flow game or fake game. So the big deal about this is although 5.x firmwares cannot currently run PS5 game dumps because they don't have access to kernel stuff yet, uh, you can still take a retail game using this dumper, a retail game that you already have on 5.x, a disc game, and you can dump it and decrypt it and turn it into a working game backup that can then be backported to run on previous jailbreaks that do have access to kernel stuff right now. Because up until now, the self decryptor has only worked up to 4.51. So you could only dump games that worked up to 4.51. But now theoretically, we can dump games up to 5.50 and then create a playable dump that can then be backported and ran on older firmwares like, like 1.x through to 4.51, for example. Not only that, but now that we actually have working payloads available for 6.0 to 7.61, maybe we could also get this ported in future to work on those firmwares too, and then we could dump even newer games, much newer games, that could then be dumped. A lot more PS5 games than are currently available. So that would certainly be an exciting development. So one of the 5.x games that this has already been done to is Biomutant. So on Prospero patches, it says the 1.03 patch of Biomutant requires 6.0, Obviously, the base version 1.00 will be a lower firmware, a 5.x firmware. So this game could not be dumped previously on any of the older firmwares up to 4.51. And it has now been dumped using this new self decryptor on a 5.x firmware to run on previous firmwares as T-Rex 777 is showing that it's running through items flow on a older jailbreak that has access to K-Stuff. And you can see uh, that he is able to actually have that game running. So, so we can expect to see some new PS5 game dumps appearing in the wild now that they can be dumped on 5.x firmwares. And hopefully this can be ported further still to 6.0 to 7.61. And then there'll be a whole lot more games on the table that could be dumped and turned into working game backups. Now, speaking of backports, we also got the release of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order with a backport to run on 2.x firmwares that use the bypervisor exploit. So I thought this was worth a mention here. According to Prospero patches here, if I go to details, it does say that the SDK version is uh, 2.0, which may have be why this backport was able to be made possible. The base version normally requires 3.0 firmware, and the backported version is actually running 1.003, which normally requires 3.20 firmware in order to run this game. So normally it would not be able to run on a 2.x system and I tried running it here on my 2.30 uh, PS5 uh, that has ETA Hen running using the bypervisor exploit and uh, yeah as you can see it works just fine. I can launch it and I can run the game just as I would be able to do on a 3.20 to you know 4.51 system. I'm able to run it on my 2.30 system here. So that adds a little bit of hope for people who are on these older firmwares the 1.x and 2.x firmwares that we can get games on higher firmwares backported to be able to run on those older firmwares so that you won't necessarily be stuck with a extremely limited selection of games from when the PS5 first launched. You'll be able to run a lot of these newer titles as they get dumped, maybe even the ones that are dumped on 5.x firmwares and eventually uh, up to 7.61 and they could be backported to run on firmwares as low as 2.x, maybe even 1.x. So anyway, that's basically it for this video. We have got a new self decryptor allowing us to decrypt games that normally require a 5.x firmware and they can then be backported to run on firmwares that have access to kernel stuff. Not only that, but kernel stuff is being ported. Uh, the offsets are being ported for it. So hopefully it won't be too long before we see a 5.x implementation of kernel stuff, allowing you to run your PS4 fake packages and of course uh, your PS5 game dumps uh, on a 5.x firmware. 
And then finally, we also, of course, have 6.0 to 7.61 finally unlocked to be able to run payloads. And I suspect we will see fairly soon new payloads for those firmwares to bring it up to the same level of functionality that we have uh, with the 5.x firmwares right now. I also know there's a lot of people who are just looking for PS4 news. Unfortunately, things have been pretty quiet in that area for the past few weeks. And uh, I do have a couple of PS4 videos planned, but they're not news related at the moment. So uh, obviously, if anything big happens there, I will let you guys know. But that is basically it for now. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.